All right, just want to take a few minutes and talk about the assessments that you're um, required to do as part of this professional development. The first one is to design your own original project-based learning. So let's look at that. It says, please submit an original PBL plan using the attached template. Examples of completed templates are included in the example PBL projects folder. Please submit only the template itself, not any of your materials or additional resources. There's a rubric for it right down here, and I trust you to kind of peruse that on your own, but I'm just going to briefly touch on each one. Key knowledge, understanding, and success. Make sure the project is focused on teaching students the specific um, content knowledge and understanding and skills, as well as your 21st century skills. For your challenging problem or question, make sure that the your actual driving question kind of drives your project. Make sure the project actually focuses on your driving question and that your driving question meets these criteria, that it's open-ended, it's understandable and inspiring to students, and it's aligned with your learning goals. In other words, to answer it, students will need to gain the knowledge and the skills that you want them to gain. Make sure that you have sustained inquiry throughout your project. Make sure that it's, that it's sustained over time and it's actually academically rigorous in which students pose the questions and gather and interpret the data and not just you giving them questions to answer or things of that nature. Make sure that it is driven by student-generated questions. Students are the focus, their questions are the important ones. For authenticity, make sure that the project is authentic. It's got real-world application, not just a classroom schoolwork application. Student voice and choice, make sure that students have opportunities to express themselves and make choices that matter throughout the project. For critique and reflection, make sure that students and the teacher, so both your students and yourself, provide feedback to your students um, recursively throughout the entire project, not just at the very end or not just one time. So at the beginning, in the middle, and after it's submitted, make sure that you and the students provide research. Recursive revision, please allow them to um, use this feedback to revise and improve their work significantly, give them multiple chances, and require them to listen to this feedback and make it better. Don't let them say, oh, I'm fine with it. You need to require them to make it better. Do not accept just their first go around. No matter what they do at first, you can always make it better. And finally, make sure that the public that there's a public aspect to it. Make sure that the work is presented publicly and at least offer to people beyond the classroom. This could be as simple as posting it online or putting it, giving it um, to your school's Facebook or whatever, but some way to make it public. It could also be pulling in experts or presenting outside the class. Um, there's a template attached below. Let me switch to that real quick. If you'll notice, this template is very closely related to the one we just went over. Um, it's got all the same aspects, so you'll need to just basically fill this in. Put in the name of your project, put in your subject, put your name here, put in how long it'll take, grade level, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you plug in your standards, all that kind of stuff. Check the boxes for the 21st century skills that you're implementing. Um, summarize your project. I'm only looking for a few sentences, something that we can look through and read and say, oh, this is, this is excellent, this is awesome. So make sure that you include what the students are doing, what issue they're solving, um, the problem or challenge they're going to have trying to solve that issue, what action they're going to take to solve it. Again, you may not know this. You may have to be pretty general here for the action taken because they might come up with something you've never even heard of. And also, why? What's the purpose of this? Who benefits? But your driving question here, make sure your driving question is open-ended, please. Make sure it is open-ended if it's a question. If it's not a question, it's a statement of problem. Make sure that it is a problem that has multiple possible solutions. Your entry event is simply, like I said, your hook. And then the products, the student will. You need both an individual and a team one. PBL does not work very well at all if you keep students in isolation amongst just by themselves. So both have both an individual and a team project and plug in what standards they meet and 21st century skills they meet. How are you going to present this to the public? And what resources will you need? This could be as simple as pencil and paper or be much more advanced. It's up, it's up to you. Reflection methods. If you pick other, make sure you click in here and specify what other. You are always welcome to um, change the formatting on this if you need more space. If you need more space, just come in here, hit enter a bunch of times, get however much space you need. And then for the student learning guide, make sure you plug in down here the individual product that they're going to create. And then down here, the team product that they're going to do. What is their project, their product? What did they make? What presentation or performance or product or service or whatever they made, their final project? there. 
this is where you link all your stuff up, remember. Put in your learning target, your um, standards. What formative assessments are you doing to make sure they meet these standards? And then how are you diversifying this for all of your students? How are you meeting any accommodations? How are you meeting different learning styles? And that is pretty much it for this. If you have any questions on this, please shoot, shoot me an email and we'll be happy to help.